Good morning, sunshine. I'm Carrie Pena alongside Brandon Lee, and we are so thankful to have all of you here with us for our show all about mental health, mental strength, and living our best possible lives. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here with us today. We want to immediately get into what is going down right now, and something very important is going down. We're talking about the, the most recent new edition of this suicide hotline prevention number, it is 988. It launched this summer and you're gonna be hearing a lot about it. A lot of advertising campaigns are gonna be going on about it because post pandemic and even during the pandemic, we did see a lot of overdoses rise, but we also saw an increase of suicides. And so um, what we're trying to do and what the whole message behind this is, is that you can actually pick up this phone number and really talk to people and counselors who are trained to help get you through that moment of crisis just long enough to give yourself a shot at going to therapy or going to help and, and seeking help so you don't end up taking your life. And we had uh, representatives from the health department here with us early on before this went public, right. talking about why this was so important. It's, it's akin to 911. Um, but for mental health and, and it's and important suicide. it's important for people in their darkest moments feel like there is somebody to talk to on the other end of a phone mm -hmm. who has compassion and empathy and can understand them and not shame them so again the number is 988 988 yep. and now the story behind the story we want to welcome here jr steiner and we are going to share three words you What's are up? amazing. Nice to see Hi, you. You are amazing. You are amazing. We're going to talk about why those words uh, are so significant to sure. JR. You're an artist. Yeah. yeah and so I make my living doing murals. You have an incredible backstory. So let's talk a little bit sure. about uh, you know where you where you come from yeah. and where you are today. You want like the like the you want You're, like a big timeline. You were homeless timeline? for a bit, and yeah. you you went through some tough stuff. Yeah. So I moved here from New York, and um, yeah, you know, New York is it's harsh. Like it, it. Now that I'm on the West Coast, I can see people's idea of New York. It really is what it is. Like New York was. Rough. Oh, I lived there for a decade. I feel yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was there. You know, the first thirty years of my life, yeah. and um, yeah, I think through a series of. Um, bad decisions and uh, lack of guidance, of, like positive male role models in my life. Like I ended up in my car trying to go to college and working at a gas station and like sleeping in the gas station parking lot after my shift and then going to, to school and trying to like afford books and it was just so wacky. And then when winter time came and I had to sleep in my car, that was when things got really real, you know what I mean? And so I've done some work, I did some work um, recently with HSC and you know, did a massive like 50 foot by 20 foot mural in the middle of the home, this homeless encampment that says you are amazing in, in, mm. in, big, in big letters. And the idea, is, I don't know what that will do for the people down there, but it's just funny how things are cyclical. You know what I mean? How I've gotten myself out of that position and now I was able to donate, afford to donate a mural to a, you know, a, a, a big area. I think it's Phoenix's biggest homeless encampment. You know what I would, what I would say gathering from that story is that um, healed people heal people. Straight up. And the lived experience that you had, whatever trauma you faced as a young child, maybe not having that male figure yeah. to kind of help you lead you, right? That will make you go astray. And you did go astray. But I'm getting the sense that art has helped you heal in many senses. Has art helped you heal? It's, it's again, it's all cyclical. So right. when I was younger, I was an artist and everybody knew me, knew me as an artist. Even my name, JR, isn't real. Like my name's actually Alex, but I came up with this name and this yeah. idea this of persona. who I can be. Yeah, this yeah. idea, like I want to be this cool guy. And then because I didn't have the guidance and didn't have the base, I never pursued it. Right. Then when I got healthy through yoga and mindfulness, moving away from New York to the West Coast where you can get kombucha on tap, you can get a Buddha bowl, you can get vegetables and healthy food and just the environment, just everything's so healthy out here. When I got healthy, then I tried art again and it worked immediately and in a big way. So you're right, it's, it, it's all a cycle. So I got healthy and then my dreams came true. You know what I mean? And now you're helping those who were in your position Straight because they, you can see them. Yes. They get you, you see them, you yeah. have lived there, you get them, which yeah. I think is a beautiful gift. Can you talk yeah. a little bit more? I, I wanna hear about those three words, you are amazing. Mm -hmm. Is this significant to your brand and yeah. why, why that was so important to you personally? But, yeah. but first, Brandon and I love to hear about those moments and how you were able to turn the corner. Yeah. So you talked about, you know, your your diet and yeah. 
mindfulness. Talk to the audience a little bit more about what specifically was so crucial for you in this journey. I had no guidance on how to eat. Like my, my food was like McDonald's, cereal in the morning and, and just low vegetables because it's tough, I think, you know, for a single mom to manage all that, you know. So most of my life, I'm talking, so I'm 40 now, believe it or not. Um, most of my life, I'm talking like zero to 35 was pretty low nutrient dense food. And then I discovered yoga randomly at a park. Somebody invited me like, hey, you should come do yoga at a park. And then I realized that when you change your environment and change the people you hang around, that whatever they're doing is what you become. So I have, I, I've latched onto this group of people who are pursuing health and then everything got fixed my it, i literally i feel like my brain gained power you know because it wasn't full of the sugar from soda and ice cream and things like that and so the last five years have been me not only fixing myself but facilitating spaces where people can get that social that really fun exciting social aspect but also get some healing well we always say too that gut health is mental health yeah yes. and that's why when you go to like if you go to a drug addiction treatment center you know that they really do educate you and they try to use all organic foods and they have private chefs because it is so crucial that when you're trying to work through whatever trauma you're working yeah. through that it all really does begin in the gut and you can't have a healthy mind without a healthy gut it's like when you when you put a a seed in soil, whatever nutrients are in the dirt are what that plant becomes. So and how if good the fruit and vegetable will be. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're putting good nutrients and good materials in your body, then what you output, whether that be your effect on the world, your art, it, it, it has more vibrancy. Mm. Yeah. Talk to us about you are amazing. Sure. What Words of words? affirmation yeah. is what that is. Straight what up. do they mean to you and how are you sharing them with the public? Yeah. So, um, I feel like my art is like secondary to the message. Like I, I, I feel like it doesn't matter what I put behind it. If it says you are amazing over the top, people want to take pictures with it and they want to yeah. share it. So I had this idea that I wanted to have a message for people as they came into my house, like just something really positive. So I just found a font online and put you are amazing in my carport. And the effect that it had on the people in the neighborhood and the people coming to do yoga was profound. So I did my first mural um, on the side of my house that said, you are amazing. And somebody from the city of Phoenix saw it, and then they hired me to do what is now still my most popular mural on 2nd and Adams. And um, that's just been the thing. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a servant to the universe, so the yeah. universe wants you are amazing. People vote with their social media posts, mm. and people go crazy yeah. for those words. And it's something they want to hear, it's something they want to see as they're driving by, and it's something they want to photograph and share, which is potent. And I think what, there's a beautiful thing that you're doing right now, really focusing on a nonprofit that's really not just about you specifically individually as an yeah. artist, but the community as a whole yeah. becoming an artist, because I'm an artist as well, and I know what, I see the magic in my art studio every single day. Yeah. I see you, it every you know, day. I DM'd you like a year ago. <laughs> like when you, so oh, when what? you retired, when you retired uh -oh. from the news station, yeah. somebody was like, you got to hit this guy up. You guys seem like, you, you guys are both like, I yeah. don't know. Are you over 40? I am 42. <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> you guys are about the same age. You guys both have tattoos. You guys are both in shape. Yeah. You do art. Hit this guy up. And you just left me on red, bro. Oh, my you God, me on scene. But you're here now. Yeah. 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 I said when I get here, though, I'm going to bust his chops about it. I but. am just now being called out <laughs> on a live taping. Yeah. Well, listen, I owe you. I'm teasing, I owe I'm you. We're about to launch. I owe you. But it's you on me. But you get a plug for, for the nonprofit. Yeah. But yeah. You do because, I, because yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. thing because it, it is a community coming together to create artwork essentially as a way for the community to come together. Yeah. So the way it all started is I was already donating murals to schools and to be frank, to places where brown kids are at because I believe that BLM really opened my eyes yeah. and COVID opened my eyes to like, there are people who need support. Yes. That you don't, you, we don't have to attribute a race to them. We just say there are people who need support. So I was donating murals for free just with my own money. And uh, this gal who at the time, Suki, was working for the Tempe Chamber of Commerce. She's like, I see what you're doing. Do you want help like making it official? So we came up with the idea of the You Are Amazing Foundation. And it took us a year and a half to get nonprofit status, but it's real now. Yeah. So now we're doing fundraisers and bringing money in. I just um, released a print. We sold a few of those and all that money goes to the the nonprofit, and then we donate murals to uh, places where kids need to see that message and also where they can get a brush on the wall 
just like you do, and they can see the impact of bright colors. You know oh, what I mean? I love and they that. can see that they can do a big piece of art yeah. if they all come together and do it. You know, it, they, it, it takes ownership too. That yeah. they're part of the fabric of the community too. There's a sense of pride there as well. And we hope to do it. I mean, we we do it in schools and in the neighborhoods where they live, so they can say, "I did that. Like I had a so, hand mm, in that." Yeah. yeah. You know. Thank you so much, Jr. You yeah, are amazing. I mean, yeah, it, it it's fits. Awesome. The, it's not just a tagline. You know, I charge every time uh, somebody uses that tagline, okay. so I'll send you a bill. <laughs> And, uh, right, because I'm going to start yeah. using it a lot because I love those three words. So, so yeah, you can bill me, but just send it through Brandon's. Yeah. You know, well, he doesn't, he doesn't respond to DMs, so, I, yeah, I'll, he'll probably never get in. I'll probably never see that money. But. JR, thank you so yeah, much. Appreciate we appreciate it. you coming in to visit yeah. with us. And now we want to share a clip from our Inspired Living segment with Zenobia Mertel. Uh, she interviewed an amazing photographer, speaking of you are amazing, uh, Courtney Lively, and she talked to us about balancing motherhood, loss, grief, and staying inspired. Here's a look. As a wife, you know, so often we're the ones that end up making so many compromises uh, for ourselves, for the family unit. Um, but I actually had some tragedies happen to me early on in my career. I was working at a marketing agency and um, I lost uh, my really good friend and my boss tragically. Uh, right around the same time, my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer and then soon after my mother as well. Um, and so I really got a slap in the face uh, from life early that it is short and, and really, really precious. Um, and that was the time in my life where I said, oh my gosh, you know, if I have to spend so much of my life working, you know, because money is important, we have to take care of ourselves, we have to take care of our family, um, then I'm going to do it doing things that I can feel passionate about and that can fuel my soul and, and feel good at the end of the day. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, oftentimes, tragedy happens and sometimes people stop in their tracks yeah. but you used it to fuel yourself and see a different perspective which is hard to do i mean if someone's in that position right now yeah. how do you break through that fear what would you say you know it, it's it is really hard and i feel really lucky that i was able to um turn my pain into something beautiful um the way i see it every morning that i wake up and i can take a big deep breath um that's a miracle you know, and so I try to live my life every day uh, honoring the people that I have lost, that I love very much, um, and, and making them proud in different ways. You know, they, they don't get to be here anymore, but I do. And so um, I can honor them in the way that I live my life and the way that I love people and the way that I work hard. Um, and it's it, it feels really good at the end of the day. Oh, you know, you talk about someone who has experienced so much grief in their life once again, right? Turning to the arts as a photographer yeah. to help her heal while also gifting something beautiful to other people. She's an incredible photographer. Amazing. Yeah, and she is just like one of those women that you like to be around because she's got so much positive yeah. energy. <laughs> we have another one of those in yes. studio. Mary Tatimis is here with us, and we're talking about hashtag keep going. We appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for having me. I this is our mind, body, spirit segment. And in this segment, we like to dig into how people have gone through tough things in their life, but managed to keep going mm -hmm. and make life better. And that is certainly your story. You became a mother at age 15. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So became a mom at uh, 15 and uh, was applying for access. Our version of welfare, right, was was on welfare, was denied several times before I finally figured out how to, to qualify. And my parents left it completely up to me to figure all of that out. They said, you can live here, but we are not doing anything else. You, If you're old enough to be making these types of decisions and you're going to figure this out, which is probably the best gift that they could have ever given me. It seems really harsh, but it really instilled a lot of independence and resourcefulness. So not having transportation, because I'm 15, having to get myself to the access office, which was not online, um, and having to navigate doctor's appointments and all of those things at 15 years old, just really, um, it just taught me how to dig deep. You know, like you don't have the answers, but you, you figure it out. And so um, at the time it sucked, <laughs> but now like looking back, I'm really grateful to my parents for letting me experience the full weight of my decisions. And I didn't have any more kids until I got married, you know, 10, 11 years later, because you, you go through it all by yourself. And my son's father was an illegal immigrant from Mexico. And I never thought that there was no like uh, knight in shining armor fantasy of what I thought that was going to be. I figured he wasn't going to be in the picture. So I didn't put him on the birth certificate. He was physically abusive. So it was, it, there was just no hope in that either. 
So um, I was very much on my own to figure that all out. Mm -hmm. and, and it was hard. But when you go through really hard things, you, I get emotional, I apologize. But you just, you realize like when the next hard thing, like everyone's going through hard stuff right now. Like everything we're all collectively experiencing right now is so hard. I don't know what's gonna be on the other side of this thing that we're all kind of collected, collectively going through, but there's always spring after winter and we are definitely in winter right now. And so you have these seasons and that was my season then, it was winter for sure. It was a really hard time. And I wanna say I was in winter for the next 20 years. I mean, it was like a really just always trying to do better than I did yesterday, trying to get out of poverty. And then I started learning how to make more and more money. I started learning how to build my value in the world so that I could, you know, charge more and make more. And, and I always saw how so many other people had these really beautiful lives and relationships and health and wealth. And I'm like, why can't I? I think I should have that too, but I got to figure out how to get there. And so my book, Hashtag Keep Going, is just story after story of, you know, you start to make it out and you're like, all right, things are going good. And then you just kind of get punched in the gut again. And you just, you have to figure it out because what's the alternative? Like to just stay there. So it's based on Winston Churchill's famous quote of, um, if you're going through hell, keep going. Right. Like, why would you stop there? Right. And so that I think is, is really the message. The other challenges, so, you know, making my way up the socioeconomic uh, status. So we, we we had a family company. We built it. We learned how to build a company worth worth uh, a lot, and we yeah. sold it in 2020 for 16 million dollars. So going from this place of poverty to the place where I have the opportunity to be today is outstanding. However, there's a lot of familiarity in surviving, and so you you tend to do things to your own life to almost sort of sabotage your way back into because you're so used to hustle and grind and like that you, you almost don't even know how to be in success. Yeah. Or just to be calm, just to allow yourself just to, to just be calm. Right. So you are now a successful speaker, a business coach. You mentioned you've built you know, this company yeah. and you'd share your success story and, and your personal mission in this book. Why is, is telling this to us, why does that make you emotional? We need people who are, are the lighthouse to show everyone else the way and to see like, listen, I know it's hard, I know it sucks, and I can speak exactly to your pain because I've been there. Correct. And, and I'm telling you. That's the key right there, is that you are taking what your life experiences, as my shaman tells me, Brandon, trauma, traumatic life experiences are opportunities. Yeah. They're opportunities for you to grow from it, heal from it, and then help other people. And that's what you're able to do. Yeah. You were able to, as a life coach, as a business coach, be able to say, I know. I know. And not just from somebody who never had that lived experience, but maybe edu was educated about it. Mm -hmm. It's different when they say, no, this is how you do it. I understand. No, you don't understand, but you do. Right. And that is why you have so much credibility in the yeah. work that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. we congratulate you um, on your book, your success, but most of all, that to Brandon's point, you continue to give back yes. yeah. to help other people mm -hmm. grow. What would be your takeaway message to the audience? Because as you um, so eloquently said, a lot of people are walking through real rough stuff. Yeah, I think it's really important to have self-compassion. And I had to ask a coach one time, like, what? Like, I mean, I understand, um, intellectually what it means to have self-compassion, but could you just like give me an actual example of self-compassion? And self-compassion just means when you're feeling low and when you're feeling like things are really, really hard, what we need to do is pause just for a moment and just add up why I'm feeling all the things I'm feeling. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's the, you know, it's all the things from the external to the internal to whatever it is, family stuff. And then this is the self-compassion part, looking at that list and saying, it makes sense. Mm. It makes sense that I feel this way. And sometimes it's okay to just be stuck on the couch. That's okay. If that's where you are, just say, it makes sense that I'm having a hard time uh, stopping binge watching Yellowstone and I just wanna keep watching this and I'm not ready to get back up again. That's okay. Understanding that that's okay and then knowing that there will come a moment that it's time to get up and it's time to take action. And the sooner you do it, even before you're ready, the better things are gonna get faster. So I just want people to have self-compassion, 
it's okay to be where you are and just know that um, just even getting up and going outside in our 111 degree weather is is going to help you move forward, taking steps forward. And hashtag keep keep going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where can people find your book? My website, MaryTowTemas.com. Thank you again, and hang with us because we're going to close out the show with a little Beyonce. We, yeah. we love Beyonce. We love Beyonce Beyond here. Jay-Z. Who doesn't love Beyonce? <laughs> I know, right? Um, she uh, just has a new TikTok, and as a matter of fact, I believe it was her very first TikTok. She's not even in it, but she has this new song out. It's called Break My Soul, and it is so cool. Of course, it's Beyonce. She's an artist in and of it herself, right? I mean, she comes up with all these clever ways. She ended up using all of her fans, who apparently have these like heartbreaking moments of them breaking their soul, because we're just living in that, as we said, we're living through winter right now. And Beyonce has some way, somehow, some way, collected all those videos from social media, created a music video for Break My Soul, and put it on TikTok. I mean, you know that you're the coolest person ever when you don't even have to appear in your own video. <laughs> you're I know. Like, and her fans that. are like freaking out because then they're watching the music video and they're like, wait, that's me. That's yeah. me and Beyonce's music video. And once again, Beyonce lifting the spirits up of, that's of right. people. That's uh, right. Collectively yeah. empowering people and just watching how people react to yep. that. Love Seeing it. themselves in a Beyonce <laughs> moment is so good. So thanks to all of you for being with us for our show, Good Morning Sunshine, all about mental health mental strength and lifting ourselves up. That's right. And you're obviously uh, streaming it right here on YouTube. Do us a favor. If you're watching this episode right now, go ahead, hit that little alarm bell signal. That will alert you every time we upload a new episode. We'll see you back here for the next edition of Good Morning Sunshine. Take care, everyone.